Okay, everybody. So the the goal of this video is to actually review a few symbols that are commonly used in things like uh, um, you know this, uh, uh, description logic or distributed uh, description uh, logic. So uh, we're going to start with the few fairly simple symbols uh, that you see on a daily basis all the time uh, and then try to, again, I, I, I'm not sure we're going to be able to cover, well, I'm absolutely sure we're not going to be able to cover everything, uh, but, you know, let's see where we can get uh, and then we can uh, basically go from there. So starting with, uh, you know, some fairly simple uh, symbols that you see on a daily basis uh, for uh, 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 description logic. Um, let's start with the negation sign. Get some color in here. And this is the negation sign. Uh, uh, sign. So basically, for example, if you say not a, uh, you're basically taking everything that's not inside a, set, a given set A. Another way of actually doing this is to use the tilde, uh, so that also means uh, uh, not. In, in, especially in, in computer sciences uh, programming, you see a lot of this. Uh, you can also have the exclamation point, but this is usually not used in uh, description logic. So that's the, the, the first one. Then another classic one, uh, is what we call the conjunction sign, uh, which basically you could also call uh, the the and sign. So basically, this is a way of saying, um, for example, set A and set B, which will primarily represent the intersection between these two sets. Okay. Now, moving on, we now have the disjunction sign, which is the OR sign, which is the conjunction. And this is the disjunction. And let's say you have something that looks like A or B. And uh, this is represented by A set A and A set B. Actually, this is not the most usual way. So basically set A here. B here, and whenever you have a disjunction uh, sign, you are referring to either uh, uh, A or B, which in this case represents the connection of these two. Other ways of representing the the uh, disjunction sign would be, for example, the plus sign. But again, this is not you will you will, you will not see this uh, fairly often. Then there's uh, continuing. Uh, there's the, another sign uh, which we call the exclusive or. Now the most common form of the exclusive or is to have something that looks like this. So it's basically a target. Okay. And the main difference here for B, it basically means that you can have either B or A, but not both. Okay? So everything that uh, is either A or B, but not both, uh, in this case, would be, okay, uh, A. Or B, B, 
but not uh, both at the same time. Uh, so basically, you know, this uh, uh, concludes what we would call the Boolean terms. So let's see a few other ones uh, that you see all the time. So another one that you will see, you know, almost all the time is what we call the universal quantification sign, which is an, an, uh, uh, an inverted A. Okay. So universal quantification. Now, universal quantification would be used in something like uh, this. So let's just try to do something. So if you, if you were to say um, universal, so for all, this is the way you, you, you read this, for all, for all x, the property x. So basically what this is saying is that uh, this property here will be true for all x. So whenever you have an element x, property x will be true. Then something else that uh, you end up seeing all the time is what we call the existential quantification. Which is basically the E uh, reverse. Okay. And we call this the existential quantification. And uh, basically, what this means is that uh, it means, you know, this is read as there exists. So whenever you're reading something, it will be uh, you will be seeing something like uh, there exists. Um, so typical example. So there exists an X where P of X. Okay. So basically, what you are seeing here is that there is at least. This is important. At least one. So there exists at least one x where the property of x actually holds. Okay, so pretty simple. Next, uh, let's try something else here. So the next one is what uh, we call the uniqueness quantification. Which you will not see as often, but you, know, you can see sometimes. So this is the uniqueness quantification. And basically, what you are seeing here uh, is that something actually exists. Oops. So it exists. Uh, but it exists exists to be exact exactly one. Okay. So if you compare this with the previous one, then you see that E of X. I got the symbol here. So that E of X. What you are seeing here is that there exists at exactly one X for which the property X actually exists. Okay? So again, pretty uh, pretty simple stuff. Now the existential symbol should not be confused with the uh, you know another symbol that looks like you know regular E, which is a membership uh, and uh, or the negation of this which is the non-exist. So basically this is to set the box uh, uh, set membership. Okay. So basically one situation where you would use something like this is to say that the element A uh, is a member 
of the set S or is an element of the set S. Or, we can cross this, uh, that A is not an element of the set S. Another fairly common uh, type of uh, uh, logic uh, sign that you will see in uh, distributed, in, in, uh, you know, logic, uh, distributed logic, is uh, the subset uh, symbol. So, probably one that you will see all the time is either the, you know, what we call the subset or the subset with an equal. So basically, the way this is read is is a subset of okay. So you could say something like uh, the uh, a is a proper subset of b, which means that uh, if you have a subset b here. Um, a will be a subset of B. Now, this other one here, it also means that A, in this case, A is a subset of B, but then A could be equal to B. So basically, in this relationship would hold, but it would also hold if both A and B uh, were to be the same uh, uh, the same set. Um, just then to finalize, so one thing we saw is a subset of. So now let's look at the opposite of this, which is the superset. So you can have the superset or the uh, uh, superset or, 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 or and also an element. It could be an element. So basically, you know, it's the, the one is the opposite of the other. Okay. So um, with one very important difference. Whenever you say that, um, so basically, let's just put this in. So they are not, uh, you know, exactly the opposite one of the other, because what you're saying here is that everything that's in A is contained within the, the set B. However, uh, whenever you are saying that B is a superset of uh, uh, of A, it means that every element of A is also a subset of B. Finally, let's just see if we missed something. Uh, well, I think we're basically running out of time, so let's just stop at this. Uh, you know, I think if you know some of these symbols, you will probably be covering uh, most of what commonly appears in, uh, um, uh, you know, logic language. Uh, and then later on, we can come back for a few other uh, videos. Bye.